Hi, my name is Josh Bashinsky, and welcome to another session of Mastering Google, SEO for 2012. Today we have a very interesting topic. We're going to be discussing the Penguin algorithm and all my reverse engineering attempts to date. I delayed in, re in releasing this video because I want to make sure what it is I was finding, and I didn't quite agree with the uh, other videos and, and uh, blog posts that are being made by other people in the industry. So I wanted to uh, take some time to make sure that uh, my data was correct. And now, uh, the date to today is the uh, 26th, 27th. Now the uh, Penguin update has been released, and I can now see that uh, my hypothesis seems to be correct. And so I'd like to share those findings with you today. So before I can discuss Penguin, though, I have to discuss Panda a little bit. Because it seems to me, based on my research, that Panda and Penguin are doing similar functions. Just one is doing a more broad approach, and one is doing a more specific approach. So let me explain. So first off, when I was doing my research, I found that there was pages that were flagged as what I call spam. Um, the spam flag is a flag that Google uses. If you've read the elite uh, uh, Google Raiders document, you know that they have a different kind of flag for all different kinds of pages. They can flag a page as malicious, they can flag a page as porn, they can flag a page as spam. And so I believe that these algorithms are going through and they're picking out pages with certain characteristics and, uh, and triggering the uh, spam flag for those pages. So this is what I think each of the algorithms are looking for. The Panda algorithm, again, is, has been mentioned, it seems to be very broad, and this has been mentioned by numerous people in the industry. Uh, it came out the week before Penguin, so the 15th to the 19th or so, and then about five days or so after Penguin. So you have to watch the dates very carefully to see if you're hit by Panda or Penguin. Ultimately, it doesn't really matter because you need to clean it all up, right? And we can't always tell which algorithm is which, and we're not always sure if, if Google's telling us the truth about what dates they're released. So it doesn't, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. You need, you, need, you need to clean everything up, and this is what I've found. So that being said, though, it seems to be the Panda algorithm, for the most part, is looking at the kind of general, broad, textual content of a page. It's looking for low-quality pages. And so it looks for things like duplicate text content, and I found around over 40% is usually around the triggering point. So if your page is more than 40% duplicated with something else, it could be in danger of being triggered by the, uh, being uh, flagged by the, the Panda algorithm. It's also looking for exact duplicate design. All these pages that look exactly the same, they have the exact same design. Uh, this is another thing that Panda seems to be looking for that I found. Uh, it's also looking for something called thin textual content. That's a page that has like one or two sentences on it or it's just jam-packed filled with ads. It doesn't have uh, that much text or any text at all. At least above 500 pixels seems to be around the magic number. So these are another thing, this is another thing you can watch out for. Another thing is that it's got bland text content. A lot of pages just had text on them and nothing else interesting going on. No images, no, no charts, no movies, no graphs, no engaging rich media content. Now, I'm not entirely sure if uh, Panda cares about that, or if it just cares about bad usage metrics. Usage metrics include things like bounce rate and the average time on page. And, in, and also uh, factored in with usage metrics, Matt Cutts has already admitted that the uh, Google Plus One reverse, the block, uh, which is still part of their uh, algorithm, still in their, bra in their uh, search engine, uh, that will trigger pages to be at least looked at for Panda, maybe even count against them in Panda. And last but not least, Panda seems to be catching, because of the pages I found were hit on these dates that correlate with Panda. Panda seems to be checking for uh, garbage or nonsense pages. Sometimes a page that is supposed to be HTML is rendered as text for some stupid reason, so you see the HTML, or sometimes it just has gibberish in it that makes no sense, just alphanumeric characters. These are called garbage or nonsense text pages, and uh, that also includes pages that have too, way too many link outs. I would say no more than, say, 10 link outs on a page, Anything more than that could be seen as excessive, especially if those link outs, those outlinks from your page, uh, have link rot. That is to say, they link to non-high uh, um, quality pages. They're linking to either actually nothing, so at 404s, or they're linking to spam pages as well. And Matt Cuts just, again, released a video on that. So if Panda goes through, they take a copy of the, their index, the entire internet, and they copy it over and run Panda on it manually. If Panda is like a spell check and grammar check, really. And if Panda finds any of these problems, it could spam flag these pages. And a spam flagged page is not going to perform very well in the SERPs, and there's other consequences as well, which I'll explain in a couple seconds. 
Okay, the other big algorithm that Google has, which is trying to detect for spam pages or low quality pages, is the Penguin algorithm. The Penguin algorithm was released on April 24th to 25th, and so based on the web pages that I looked at that seemed to be hit at that time, both on-site pages and off-site backlinking pages, these are the kinds of things that the Penguin algorithm seems to be looking for. And uh, strangely enough, it's exactly what Matt Cutts said. First off, they seem to be looking for non-viewable keywords. This is hidden keywords. So if the uh, text on the page that is what this page is about, which is the keyword, right? So if the page is about uh, red apples, the, the phrase red apples, best red apples, buy red apples, those kinds of phrases would be key phrases or keywords because that's exactly what the intent of the page is about. And if you have any of those kinds of words or phrases that are non-viewable on the canvas, the, the, the user of the page cannot see as soon as, soon as the page loads, those are consult, considered hidden text. And it can be hidden through HTML, so that's the meta keywords, for example. That's the title attribute and the anchor tag, for example. Uh, but also through CSS, through using the visibility hidden or the display colon none CSS rule selectors. So Google's being very draconic about this these days, and you cannot have any keywords that are hidden. You can have other words that are hidden, just not the keywords that are hidden. Um, repetitive keywords as well. What do I mean by repetitive? Uh, the Google engineers are getting very good at making their algorithm understand web pages like a human does. And so if it sounds repetitive to you when you read it, then you can bet dollars to donuts. I'm 90% sure it's going to sound repetitive to the, to the algorithm if they read it. So that means the keyword density can't be too high, probably not, not anything over 4%. And it cannot be stuffed. Keyword stuffing means you're just stuffing the keyword in there just for the sake of stuffing it in there. And it will sound repetitive when you read it. So read through and write everything for a human because trust me, there's no need to fake relevancy. There's only a need to fake authority if you're going to do black hat SEO. Google is smart enough to know what this page is about. You don't need to stuff keywords in there. It's not going to help you rank and it's just going to get you penalized. Finally is non-editorial keywords. So that is to say the big block of text at the bottom of the footer or a big block of text in a side nav which is stuffed full of keywords again that don't need to be there. That's not to say you can't have footer text or side nav text. Of course you can. Every website does. But if you have a bunch of keywords in there uh, just for the sake of trying to manipulate Google, Google's algorithm is getting very good at finding that. That's exactly one of the things that Pen Penguin is looking for. So if Penguin finds any of this stuff on your page then it, it too, uh, based on my research, it too will put a spam flag on that page. And that page is not going to do very well in the SERPs, and it, there's going to be other problems connected with that page, which I'm going to explain in a second. Okay, so the question is, if Panda and Penguin find these pages and spam flag them, what is that going to do for your rankings? What is that going to do for your site? Well, as we can see, the effect is actually rather drastic. What that's going to do, a spam flagged page essentially equals a penalty for that particular web page. The penalty seems to be uh, minus y to the power of x, so to, to a factor of x. So usually y seems to me to be about six or eight positions, and then it's uh, exponentially multiplied based on how uh, severe the penalty is, how much uh, spam they find, or how much. Uh, penalizing things they find seems to increase the uh, the penalty. So it's, you could be, if you're very minorly hit, it could just be an 8-spot drop. It's usually what I find. But if you're hit uh, majorly, it could be a 16-spot, you know, it could increase in multiples. Down to 300, 400 uh, position as well, or right out of the top 1,000. So that's what's going to happen to that particular web page. And so that page is going to rank lower on the topic it's supposed to rank for. So the topic it's supposed to rank for is the text, that's what Panda looks at, right, the general text is about, and then the specific keywords, that's what Penguin looks for, of that particular page of what it's supposed to rank about. Not only this though, and this is the insidious part, not only is it going to, the, that page is going to rank lower, but all the pages that it links to are going to rank lower. It's going to provide, because it drops in rank, it's going to provide less voting power, less link juice to all the pages that it outlinks to. And it says that I'm voting that this page I'm linking to is great on topic XYZ. I'm about topic XYZ, and I vote through the anchor text about this page, which is also on topic XYZ or XY or whatever the uh, anchor text is, right? And I'm saying it's great because I'm great on this topic, and I'm vouching for this other page. That's how the linking system works. But if this page gets spam flagged and it drops, so too will this page. 
So I have a diagram here to kind of show that. So if this is your website here, above the dotted line, and these are all your backlink pages, and they're all about topic A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B, pointing to your A, B page, whatever the variable A, B is, you know, red apples or blue apples, whatever. And then here's your backlink pages for the topic X, Y, Z. Say that the site is about X, Y in general. This is the index page. It doesn't have very many backlinks. But this subpage here has a lot of backlinks. But when the Penguin or Pandem algorithm rolls out, and this is where they're ranking here. Let's say they're ranking very well. They're ranking position one, position two. And the backlink pages are going to be down there somewhere because if they're doing black hat linking, they're probably going to be some kind of auto-generated page, right? That's not going to be ranking too well, and that's exactly what you want. You don't want your black hat pages to be spamming up the index. The ironic thing is that white hat uh, SEOs think that black hat SEOs want to spam the index. You know, they certainly don't. <laughs> they just they want to rank in the competitive niches that they want to compete in, and there's no other way of doing it other than doing black hat currently. So, so these are all your back, backlink pages. Now, what happens when when Penguin or Panda rolls around, okay, well, the algos uh, copy this data out, they run their uh, processes on it, Oops, they find some dupe content, they find some keyword stuffing, they find some hidden keywords, right? Uh, it, whether it's inadvertent or avertent, it doesn't matter. And so look at this page here. This page has no links to it, but let's say the Penguin algorithm found it and it had some keyword stuffing, it had some meta keywords and footer text, uh, and so it found it, and it drops all on its own. It has nothing to do with backlinks. But let's say this page here went through and it dropped as well and you're thinking well why is there something wrong with that page no because it could be that all of the voting pages it had or a high percentage of the voting pages it had they were spam flagged because they had keyword stuffing they had dupe content in the backlinks they had you know whatever that penguin that i just said panda and penguin looks for and so these these pages that were previously ranking on position 30 and say 40 if they or suddenly going to be ranking now on, you know, whatever, position 80 and position 120, if they sink, then all of a sudden the page that they link to is not going to have as much foundation, as much power, right? And suddenly this page is going to be down at 20 level instead. Not because anything on this page was found, but because these pages that voted for it on topic X, Y, Z, whatever the topic is, suddenly they lose all their voting power and so all the pages they link to are going to sink down as well. Just like if your foundation starts to sink, parts of your house are going to sink. If your whole foundation sinks, your whole house sinks, right? And so because this subpage goes down, so too is the index page as well, even though it didn't have any particular problem with it because it was getting most of its link juice, in this case, from its subpages. And this one fell and this one fell because this one was found in particular and this one fell only because its backlink pages fell in rank as well. So this one now it's going to drop to say, you know, whatever, pay, uh, position 12. Okay, so that's what it's going to mean for you to have spam flagged backlink pages that no longer have such a strong vote for your page. And so the uh, page is going to fall in ranking, uh, not because there's anything wrong with your page per se, but because the backlink pages no longer have the same voting power on topic XYZ, on the topic that they, the, the, the keywords in the anchor text, they're saying, yeah, this other page is great for this. I'm voting for it. If, so if that's the case, then you have to remember, uh, despite what apparently the rest of the SEO industry seems to think at this moment, Penguin and Panda have absolutely nothing to do with links per se. All they do is they find pages that are not high enough quality as far as Google is concerned and turf them out of the index. And because they get turfed out of the index, or at least they're spam flagged and so they're not uh, represented in the index, therefore their representation for pages they link to is not going to be as strong at all or be non-existent on the topics X, Y, Z, or whatever topic A, B, or topic X, Y, Z, whatever topic they link out to. So if that is the case, then what can we do to protect ourselves against uh, Panda and Penguin? What, uh, what, does that, what can we do to fix it? Okay, so if this is what Panda and Penguin are looking for, then this is what you can do to fix it and to protect yourself from moving forward. The first thing you need to do is if they look for on-page spam, then you need to fix all the on-page issues that I mentioned previously, the dupe content, the thin content, the bland content, the keyword stuffing, the hidden keywords, the blocks of keyword text. You need to fix this not only, mo mostly on your own site, because that'll flag pages and they'll, they'll derank them just for that, uh, by those rights alone. But also, if you have the ability, 
if you can access your backlink pages, you can email people who have linked to you, you can ask them to spruce up their pages maybe a little bit, or if you have access to your own backlinking pages, you could try and fix those pages, and so what turns into a non-vote turns back into a vote. The next thing you, and this is, I just want to clarify, that point is extremely important. That's really all you can do, that's really all you need to do, is to improve the quality of these pages, especially the pages on your own site. Uh, you know, uh, take a really hard look at your own pages, be a little bit draconic, and, and see if uh, all the keywords on there are necessary and if your content really is high quality. Don't make any assumptions that Google will allow this, Google will allow that. They won't. They're getting very draconic and very choosy as to what they'll allow in their index. The next is, here's a bit of reassuring news. If, that, if, if, if my theory is correct on how this is working, then Penguin-based negative SEO is not really possible. All of the other negative SEO that you can do, which I, my last video was about, which you can check out if you uh, have a strong stomach, because it's it gets pretty nasty. Negative SEO gets pretty nasty. But in this particular case, there's some good news, that penguin-based negative SEO really is not possible. Sure, your competitors could point a bunch of spam pages linking to you, but all that's going to do is going to give you a temporary boost, actually, until the next version of Penguin rolls out, in which case all those links they gave you will be discounted. So you're going to go back to ground zero. So there's no total negative effect, at least as far as I can tell. It could be that perhaps if you're over-optimized on red apples, red apples, and they point a whole bunch of red apple link to you, you might go over some kind of general over, overarching spam threshold. But I strongly doubt it. And quite frankly, I did not find any evidence of this in my testing. I was looking for it specifically because everyone else in the SEO industry seems to think this is part of what's going on. I think that's just all correlation. I could not confirm those hypotheses. Three is, and this is, I can't stress this enough, contrary again to all the opinions that are out there right now, there is no need to go out and delete those links uh, to have them not counting against you. Because quite frankly, Google has already done that. Google has already discounted those links because they're on pages that they're no longer going to think are high quality or quality enough to count anymore. So again, unless there's some kind of overarching uh, spam penalty uh, when you have, you know, 50% of your links are on this keyword on spam flag pages, you have just too many spam flag pages linking to you or something like that, unless there's something like that going on, which I, I can see no evidence that there is, you don't need to go back and delete the links. Google has already done that for you. Finally, all you need to do to combat uh, Panda and Penguin and to uh, rank well moving forward is to add quality links uh, based on your keywords. So just make sure that all your backlinking pages are not spammy backlinking pages and make sure especially all your, all your pages on your own site are not spammy pages. Do not run afoul of the, the things that I mentioned previously in the video. Now, does that mean that you can just spam away with your exact match money keywords to try and rectify this issue? My answer would be no. You can't have uh, like 100% of your exact match keywords pointing to your site. That does look unnatural. There are other algorithms at play. I'm only talking here about Panda and Penguin. They have other algorithms to detect paid links, so it looks like paid links. They do seem to have other algorithms that check for a truncated page rank, for other linking issues. So, and even if they don't today, it's such a hubbub in the SEO industry right now that, you know, it wouldn't be surprising at all for them to start checking for this in the future. So it is always a good idea to have a natural looking uh, SEO portfolio on page and off page. And this is the kind of uh, anchor text distribution that they have. So this is the, the ubiquitous <laughs> proverbial natural linking portfolio. They have about 30% exact match query. So let's say you're trying to optimize for red apples. That means that the phrase red apples is going to show up with red and then apples right after it. It's going to show up no more than 30% of the time in any uh, sentence. You know, it could be great site for red apples or it could just be red apples. It actually looks very unnatural to have a site that has just red apples in it unless that's the name of the company or something like that. And then 30% partial match query. So instead of, uh, of uh, uh, red apples, it would be one apples, question mark, go red. So apples, the word apples and red shows up in there, but they're not together, they're not beside each other, and they're interspersed with some of the words as a partial match, or just apples is in there, or just red is in there. That's a partial match uh, anchor text, about 30% of that. And then 30% just your URL, and then 10% generic, click here, visit us, you know, cuckoo, cuckoo, whatever, doesn't matter, it's just generic, kind of uh, jetsam, flotsam words. 
And I would suggest that there should be natural uh, sounding uh, words throughout the entire thing. So this is a great site for red apples, not just red apples. Or click here for red apples, that kind of a deal. That sounds more natural. So I'd like to leave you with two last points when it comes to Google in general, but especially Panda and Penguin. One, don't over-optimize. There is absolutely no need to uh, try and fake relevancy. The very idea is uh, kind of contradictory, in fact. Google knows what the page is about. You don't need to try and uh, stuff keywords into various areas to make them think that, that you're about this. They're getting very good at knowing what the page is about. And uh, not, only, uh, not only that, but you don't need to over-optimize in terms of if your URL says red apples in it, you don't need to have red apples in your title. In fact, you shouldn't. You should have some secondary keyword in there get the best apples here, or some kind of call to action in your titles. So only have the query in one space, right? You don't need it in both spaces. Uh, you may be the, the text and the title, but not the URL or the URL. You know, one of these, two of these out of three of these spaces. So, and the point is that over-optimization over is both risky and unnecessary, right? Not only will doing those kinds of things uh, put you at risk for the current algorithms or the future algorithms that are going to come out, but it's, un it's totally unnecessary. Google knows what the page is about. You can check Google Webmaster Tools and see what they think the page is about, and 90% of the time that's correct. And if it's not, just change the text and the titles a bit, and they'll know what the page is about. They're getting very good at it. Last but not least is this says, always try and look natural. Everything you do with your SEO should be natural looking. The backlink portfolio should be natural looking, and your on-page should be natural looking. Uh, that way, that's the best white hat, black hat, gray hat, any hat, SEO tactic you can do is always try to be natural looking. So that whenever Google looks at what's going on, uh, uh, all that returns to say nothing but natural uh, SEO donated links going on here. But that's going to be the SEO tactic that is always going to be the best thing to do and it's always going to stand the test of time. So that's what I think we need to do to fix Panda and Penguin. And although uh, Penguin 1.1 has just been refreshed and just been released and uh, it's very early, all the early data is, is correlating with what it is I've been saying to do here. So uh, hopefully my hypothesis is correct, and uh, I can explain much better how I came to these conclusions in the comments for the video. And if you have any questions, again, you always know where my Twitter is. You can email me or comment in the questions. Good luck.